Hello, everybody. I'm Yuri, uh, Principal Engineer in APSA Group, and Zach, together with me uh, we are, uh, today, and we are going to talk about uh, our experience of building and maintaining and operating cloud-native global load balancer for Kubernetes in production. Yeah, hello everyone, it's Zach Anderson. I run the Kubernetes service for APTA. Um, nice to see you all here, excited. Um, and I'll give it back to Yuri that we can carry on. Cool, thanks Zach. So let's uh, jump straight away to the presentation. So, well, where uh, and how it all started? Somewhere in 2019, uh, APSA Group uh, uh, figured out that uh, organization needs open source uh, global service load balancing function, some uh, cloud native solution to uh, uh, steer the traffic in a smart way uh, over geographically uh, dispersed uh, um, Kubernetes clusters. And uh, we needed to uh, solution to be able uh, uh, to be aware of internal workload state inside this cluster uh, avoiding standard HTTP end-to-end -end checks. So to be a real cloud native. Uh, and we didn't find any existing the proprietary vendor solutions, uh, and there were no also appropriate uh, open source uh, alternatives. So uh, that's why we created KGB. Uh, the project started in December 2019. Uh, it stands for Kubernetes Global Balancer, uh, and uh, it was developed uh, in an open source uh, in a GitHub repository from day zero. So in totally open manner uh, as a open source project uh, from the very beginning. Uh, slightly more than one year fast forward, we managed to uh, attract a small community, uh, built a mature enough project and to reach the CNC we have a sandbox level acceptance, which we are very, really proud of. And we are using it in KGB in production for more than one year, uh, maybe already a year and a half. So uh, let's talk about some Kubernetes, uh, sorry, KGB concepts uh, uh, that are very important uh, from architecture perspective. So it is cloud native uh, uh, global service load balancing. Uh, it is built on top of uh, uh, operator pattern, uh, meaning uh, that it is a controller uh, which resides on Kubernetes clusters and it's uh, uh, backed by a SSH custom resource definition. We don't have any single point of failure, so there is no control cluster uh, and KGB is uh, deployed uh, next to JSLB enabled workloads. KGB uh, utilizes uh, standard Kubernetes primitives for its own operation. So it's a uh, uh, ingress uh, services and uh, associated pod uh, liveness uh, and readiness checks. Uh, overall operations is based on um, battle tested DNS protocol. Uh, uh, which enables us to, to be highly reliable and to operate on a global uh, scale. DNS is used bo both for uh, uh, traffic steering and uh, uh, cross-cluster state exchange. In trying to be as environment agnostic as possible, meaning that we are automatically configuring only zone delegation on a uh, environmental DNS provider like Route 53, Infoblox, or NS1. And uh, we are not creating any other resource records uh, to steer the traffic. KGB is uh, responding um, uh, to DNS uh, requests on this own inter integral uh, core DNS process. So, uh, to specifically to the components, uh, as KGB itself is an operator, a controller for CRD, we, we used the operator framework to bootstrap the project. It was very useful in the, in the very beginning. 
and provided us a good structure uh, uh, to create a powerful operator. Core DNS is used to, uh, as a, a very important part, as uh, I slightly mentioned before. Uh, Core DNS uh, is uh, working uh, uh, in cooperation with a KGB controller and watching for specific DNS endpoint resources and providing dynamically constructed DNS responses to steer the traffic uh, in, according to uh, global service load balancing strategy. An external DNS uh, project, which is pretty well known in the Kubernetes community, is also used uh, to configure the zone delegation in a HDNS provider. So say a provider of your environment in cloud or, or on-prem. So in our case, when we operate in AWS, we configuring uh, zone delegation in Route 53. When we operate in on-prem, currently for us, it's configuration uh, of info blocks uh, with a further uh, migration to NS1. And overall, uh, GSLB uh, function, GSLB strategy is controlled by a single resource definition uh, called GSLB. And uh, that's how application teams are uh, getting power over the global traffic steering uh, and uh, can rely on their own uh, pod uh, lightness and healthiness checks uh, of their own application, which are actually directly affecting the traffic steering behavior. So that's uh, uh, this diagram is taken from our official KGBIO website, which is depicting multi cluster scenario. Uh, it, it is very simple flow. Uh, one uh, important thing to highlight again is that KGB is deployed right to the clusters where uh, application that requires to be enabled, um, globally enabled, uh, uh, the same cluster where uh, this uh, workload is running. So whenever a GSLB resource is created uh, by application team or associated pipelines, uh, the special ingress resource is created and uh, enables the HTTP traffic steering. And uh, whenever the actual end user is making a DNS uh, request, like this browser or by any other means, uh, this request is going to uh, end up on a KGB uh, pods and core DNS pods and uh, KGB is going to return uh, the DNS response according to the global strategy uh, that is configured within a GSLB CRD. And uh, the requester will get an appropriate IP address and will hit the ingress controller and will hit eventually the application pod. So you can imagine that we can build uh, some a uh, couple of obvious strategies there. So that's exactly what we did. So one is round robin. So we, we just kind of uh, uh, spreading the traffic in a random manner over the GSLB enabled uh, clusters. And another is failover, which we also frequently using and uh, we'll be using for the demo today is um, uh, uh, a strategy where we can uh, uh, pins uh, one of the data centers, one of the clusters to be primary. And whenever uh, uh, we're plotting this primary cluster is healthy, the traffic will be served from uh, this DC one only. And whenever workload is treated unhealthy, also dead, then it will be automatically fail, fail, uh, over, failed over uh, to the secondary uh, cluster, uh, cluster. So it's important to understand that this failover is cross-regional. So in, in our case, it's a, in on prem case, it's a distinct data centers. In, uh, uh, and in AWS case, uh, it is different regions. For us, it's Cape Town and Ireland. So it's really cross-regional 
load balancing. So that's high level uh, design of KGB. And we can uh, talk about uh, internal adoption by APSA group. And uh, Zach, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Yuri. That was an awesome overview of uh, the components of the solution. Uh, really, it's good to see the, the diagrams again. Um, okay, so from an EBSA internal perspective, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do and why we do it. So uh, we've got about 12 tenant teams that are running this. Um, and from a perspective of clusters, uh, we've got 122 Kubernetes clusters on-prem today. 36 of them are basically enabled for KGB. That's mainly our core API payments engines. It's our markets FX. Um, it's our FX as well. Um, there are also some other services that are sitting there um, for authentication. So we're using that, uh, for example, Keycloak. Uh, we've got an active, active setup setting in those production services. Um, from a services that are enabled uh, quite easily, and like Yuri's explained, um, it's an annotation that gets enabled. And that's why we can roll out these GSLB enabled services quite quickly. And once it's installed into the clusters, um, they become geo aware. So it doesn't matter whether it's in one data center or the other, those two clusters then start working together. And it's a simple annotation. That's why we've got currently 360 core bank uh, backed services that are sitting there. Um, so obviously today, um, Yuri's mentioned that we're using InfoBlocks. Uh, we built this um, because we could not get a solution to integrate properly into a DNS or Edge DNS provider. Um, the other one that we are definitely going to switch to would be NS1, um, and that's a seamless migration. So the nice thing about KGB, if we're adding in the next Edge DNS, it's simply a switching to the next provider. And then our last section would be Route 53, which is going into the cloud, which Yuri has already mentioned. We're going to AF South 1 and EU West 1, and that enables us to move workloads between on-prem and in the cloud uh, quite easily and quite quickly. Um, so the biggest thing about this whole about the whole solution was how would we do new tenants and services, and basically we will drive failover automation as far as possible. Um, we are trying to integrate automated pipelines um, and then make them aware so that the teams or the developers can actually enable their own exposed services without going to the network team or going to the DNS team or going to any other team to fail over my stuff in a failure scenario. And that was the beauty about KGB. It gave that functionality that we could lose a whole data center or another data center. And if we had cloud and on-prem, uh, we would have officially four data centers running. So we could run workload in all four data center. Um, the, the nice thing that we did is because we are a template or templatized environment, this was a simply a module that we added into our, our CRCD and we templatized the actual annotations for the teams and all they had to do was put like three variables in and the annotations would then flow into their pipelines and it would go from dev, SIT, UAT and prod and it would enable those services quite quickly. They didn't have to log changes or engage third party people to help them and things like that. So the key thing and why we built this is we wanted to make sure DR automation was done automatically. So people usually say they don't know what went wrong and where it failed over to. But now we have a way to automate it and make sure that we can actually make sure our services run 24 uh, seven, I would say. So, and the cool thing about this app, which is quite awesome and I love the app, um, the teams themselves are in control of that. So you start pushing teams to become high performing teams that don't have to go to multiple people. So yeah, Yuri, um, I'm gonna give it back to you, but that's a overview of the internal adoption. Uh, I'm excited to see the demo with you. I'm gonna ask a few questions, so let's go. Thanks a lot, Zach, and amazing overview and a very rewarding feedback on KGB. Thank you so much. All right, so we can pretty much uh, jump straight to the demo. So the demo setup uh, looks like following. So we have two uh, Kubernetes uh, EKS clusters in AWS. 
I will demonstrate environment with my CLI. So one of the cluster is in U West one, and another cluster in AF South one. So that's exactly a couple of regions that we mentioned before that we operate. And in each of them, uh, we already have a, a KGB uh, brain reinstalled. So it's all up and running. Actually, it, we can quickly get through the components. So that's uh, the main ports, main KGB controller, the core DNS that's responding to uh, DNS requests and it uses a special plugin to, uh, to coordinate with uh, special CRDs and external DNS that configures the zone validation. So uh, what is actually uh, prepared for this setup? Uh, we uh, deployed uh, a sample work workload and uh, created associated uh, GCLB resource. So the GCLB resource looks very simple. Uh, our API namespace, uh, API group, sorry, uh, kind, uh, standard metadata, and uh, as you can see, uh, this part of GSLB spec is like one-to-one -to, -one to standard ingress resource. So it, it says standard ingress spec, but embedded into GSLB uh, CRD. And we are composing this uh, uh, ingress spec with a GSLB strategy. In this specific case, it's a failover, and we, we are pinning the primary uh, to be U West one. And uh, Yuri, the, maybe to come yeah. in there, right? So yeah. from an ingress perspective, um, if uh, teams know how to use ingress, they will be able to use KGB because it's almost like for like, like you've said, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so basically if ingress is, is already pre uh, exists uh, in a Helm chart or something, there are uh, uh, two ways. Like we can extend Helm chart with a JSLB resource, or we can annotate existing ingress with a special with a special KGB annotation and KGB will react accordingly. So That's cool, using, eh? We are using this uh, uh, trick for internal adoption as well. So, uh, yeah, we have a test GSLB namespace where we had a, a where we have a, a standard, uh, like to very popular, not standard, but very popular for on the info application deployed. And uh, we are using it to uh, test the GSLB uh, function. And we have uh, GSLB already applied here. The strategy failover and US one uh, primary geotech exactly the spec that I showed before. Uh, it's it's already running, so we can look into uh, its runtime status and basically YAML, YAML spec. Uh, so status depicting the current geotech uh, and uh, Mm, already a healthy record. So it, it populates the associated uh, uh, publicly available IP address into DNS endpoint uh, because the current uh, uh, backend ports are all healthy. And uh, it goes, it, uh, it makes this health check very trans, uh, standard transitive way. So we have ingress. Uh, we have a host uh, like a DNS uh, uh, FPDN to uh, respond to, and we have a uh, backend service front end for the info. And basically, uh, when this um, service has uh, more than uh, zero endpoints, it, it is treated as healthy. And that's exactly how it's getting populated uh, internally in Kubernetes according to the uh, port health check status. Let 
probably describe. We will show it better. Yeah, so this is n points array, and if n points array is not populated, then KGB will treat this uh, workload automatically and healthy. So that's how it, it, it works internally. So uh, we can run a very simple uh, script. Uh, which we will uh, test mm, uh, we'll test this uh, specific uh, FQDN uh, over FQDN testing FQDN failover, uh, failover test KGB over. So uh, that's exactly DNS name we are testing. And currently it's resolvable and it returns exactly these IPs that are uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, treated as uh, healthy and returned uh, from the ERP in data center. And just in case this is, they are equal to the IP addresses of a, a network load balancer in AWS setup that is exposed, so which is associated to uh, uh, ingress the uh, engineering controller in this specific reference setup of ours. So we can run the test script. What it will do is actually will curl over, uh, over this. Uh, so you, that's like a user connecting to that endpoint the whole time. Yeah, pretty much. So I, I'll show the whole chunk. So it's a standard curl, right? So it's a sample uh, output and we intentionally populating um, uh, a custom message with a geotech uh, according to the uh, uh, pod location, right? So whenever um, we reach the uh, AF cells one, it will be immediately visible in, a, in the output. But currently, again, we're using failover strategy. It is pinned to Europe and workload in Europe is healthy. So setup is set. And we can, uh, before uh, simulating a failure and disaster in Europe, we can look around that we have a very symmetric setup in, uh, in Africa. So exactly the same workload. KGB is obviously also installed there. Yeah, just to double check that it is Africa. So no, say if cells one, all good. And uh, absolutely the same GSLB spec. Uh, same strategy, no special uh, configuration required. So. It's exactly the same spec uh, as was applied in Europe. Also, uh, Africa is aware that uh, main primary cluster is the US one. That's why it is returning uh, consistent responses, DNS responses, these European IP addresses as well. So even when, Wait, just, the, yeah? So maybe to ask there, Yuri. So if we set it to round robin, we'd obviously see AF South one, E West one, AF South one, E West one. Yeah, uh, cool. we would uh, uh, we would see a mixed response. Yeah, uh, but here we are uh, speaking to uh, one or another. So Got yeah, uh, we have a symmetric, uh, consistent configuration on both of the clusters, and everything is working as expected. Every everything uh, is fine in Europe. So let's uh, emulate uh, an outage in Europe with a standard Kubernetes approach of scaling replicas down to zero. So I'm just scaling down a testing workload and uh, let's give it uh, one or two reconciliation loops and see how it will behave. So let's see just view yum. Yeah, and you can see that it's already five or three in a testing loop. Uh, 
that's uh, important uh, to discuss. So here you you we already can see that KGB is reacted and and uh, detected the malfunction of application and is returning uh, the African IP set. But for like roughly 30 seconds, we were still hitting like uh, standard ingress uh, 503 uh, while the application was done in Europe. Why did it happen? Why uh, we had this small window? It is because on this global uh, load balancing scale, we are operating with DNS and DNS has its advantages and has its limitations. So, and one of the limitations is uh, uh, operating within a, uh, a TTL value, a time to leave value. And we are trying to keep it as low as possible. For us, it's 30 seconds. It's already pretty aggressive. Uh, to, from uh, uh, operational standpoint, that please keep me honest. Yeah, for us, it worked pretty nicely. Yeah, so that's a very important point, right? So this is failing a major region over. So from that aspect, um, the TTL was quite acceptable. Um, all the other backend stuff, um, like databases and things, would also have failed over. So the app would have come up, um, the databases would have failed over. And in that scenario, um, we would have been running within a minute, you know. So that's more than acceptable for what we have um, inside our bank. Perfect. Thank you, Zach. So as you can see, currently it did a successful failover end to end. So uh, requester customer uh, is hitting uh, a pulse in in Africa. We can switch to African cluster and, and look around what is happening there. I think Gary, the other key thing about what's being shown with the KGB. If you yeah. deploy it to another region, um, it's just going to pop up um, as another primary geotag potentially that you can either switch to or configure. So if you literally did have both regions failing and you had to go to your DR region, which could be um, uh, the, the, the US South or US East, um, you could be running within five minutes potentially if your pipelines have been set up in, in, in that case, right? So from a, a recovering of a service, the KGB installation is such that you can fail it over, even re reproduce the installation and get going if your pipeline um, is done the way that you want it to set up, right? You can do it manually, you can do it quickly. And I think that's the key thing for me was the easy, quick way we could get KGB up and running when we lost, say, a data center. Um, and those chaos tests that we do um, actually show that, right? So we could lose everything. We'll be up before other teams are up because we have this tool, you know? Very good point. Thanks a lot, Zach. And yeah, very uh, uh, cool moment. We can pretty much uh, move the tech, uh, uh, if you like, right, to another data centers and 3 ping. So back to our scenario. Uh, Again, consistent response. Primary is still you was the one. We didn't make a repeat. Uh, it just like a secondary cluster is responding, and secondary cluster is aware that whenever uh, a workload in a uh, primary one will be healthy, it, it should fail over back. So let's do that, and we can. We, first of all, we need to switch back to Europe. And second, we need to scale workload back. So it is still, should be healthy soon. Let's see on here, JSLB status. It's already picked it up, the healthiness. Uh, in Europe, obviously faster, given the location to the workload. And what about Africa? Not yet. So uh, it requires some 
additional reconciliation loop and also uh, some uh, cross cluster synchronization, like somewhere around 30 seconds. I think this was the cool thing for me. So we, even when oh, the data center came brilliant. back, we're still running and then it would then fail over back to the primary data center without even doing anything. And mm -hmm. that was for me like really, really cool to see, you know. Great feedback. And yeah, so it's internally updated and after some DNS detail plus some seconds, right? It's already available end to end. So for end to end tests, it also fully failed over uh, back to Europe. So I guess uh, we can conclude the demo. That's cool, Yuri. Thanks, man. Thank you, Zach. Thanks all for support. And yeah, looks like we're out of time. So thanks a lot for uh, visiting us at our presentation. And please visit us at KGBIO. We are very open for any feedback, contributions, and any suggestions. Thank you so much. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Go visit the site. Awesome to see you. Uh, enjoy. Have a great uh, rest of the conference. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers.